Hey guys, Eric here outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to stay centered during the backswing. Now, this will be a little bit different. You're gonna see here in a moment, one of our kagornogolf.com members, Mr. Jim, we're gonna show you his golf swing and uh, show you what we're gonna do to fix his swing and the plan we put together. Now, our hope is to take some of these uh, swings and do videos like this in the hopes that it helps some of you who have the same similar issues. So, you can see how we put a plan together. You can take little pieces yourself and ultimately, hopefully, play better. So, let's shoot over, let's show you Jim's swing. I'll tell you a little bit more about his Game, and then we'll talk about how to fix it. Okay, so there we saw Jim's swings. And as we go here, you're gonna see on the screen some of the feedback that I gave him in our Facebook group at cagornogolf.com and how we uh, identify the priorities and build a plan. Now, there's a couple things we're gonna focus on with Jim. Now, Jim, when he answered the questions, is someone who shoots in the 80s, so he shoots you know, somewhere between 80 and 90, and the main thing that he expressed he wanted to work on or improve was the contact with the irons. Now, you can see from there, there's a couple of pieces, two in particular, during the backswing that he does, that create problems during the downswing, which ultimately is why he's not able to hit the ball solid. And those two things specifically are too much sway with the body and not enough fold of the right arm and wrist. Now, let's talk about the sway part first. Now, when we did the feedback, Jim put on there, hey, I think I sway too much. I said, yes, in fact, you do sway too much. And the basic principle, guys, in terms of sway is this. When I start, I put a picture of Adam Scott on there with a line up the ball, basically right up his left ear. If I want to hit the ball solid with my irons, I know that I need the club head to strike the ball first and ground second. Now, is that going to be easier to do if my head is pretty much where I started and or forward of it? Or is that gonna be easier, harder to do if I move way off the ball and back behind it? Right, obviously for me to hit the ball solid, where my head is in space is gonna be a big thing that indicates or dictates that. We see with Jim, I draw the line up the ear, his head moves way too far off the ball during the backswing. Now that line's way forward, I'm way back here. Now he could go way forward and kind of get himself back forward of it. But he doesn't, he stays too far back. And so I really would just like to eliminate that and learn to stay more centered. We'll talk about the drill for that in a moment. The second thing we see there is the trail arm stays too wide, so it doesn't bend enough, and there's not enough hinge. So I put a picture of Jim on there where he's up top, um, the club's here, and then I show an example where the arm bends more and he hinges the wrist. Now, I want him to bend the arm until about it gets to 90 degrees. And then I want him to hinge the wrist until the club is more parallel to the ground. And the reason for that, back to hitting the ball solid, is we see with Jim, arm too wide, not enough hinge. And then when he starts down from the face on, he's unhinged too early and the arm's too wide too early because he never got him set on the way back. So what we want to do and what I gave him was, hey, not during the takeaway, I want the arm to be pretty wide here. But from the takeaway to the top, the right arm should fold more, bend more to get to 90, and we should add some hinge, thumb closer to my forearm, to get the club more down the line. Now I'm really doing that from the takeaway through the top and in transition. And now that puts me in a position where I look much different during the downswing to deliver the club down into the ball to hit it solid. And so that's really what we wanted to start with to be able to strike the irons more solid was, hey, Let's put something up here, I'll show you in a minute. Let's keep the head on that and stay centered. And as we're doing that, fold the trail arm, increase the hinge. Now from there, my head's already up over the ball. I've got more hinge here. I can transport that during the downswing and ultimately hit the ground in front of the ball. Now let's talk about the main drill that we're gonna use with Jim to stay centered. So the first drill we're gonna do, and what I'm gonna give Jim to stay centered, is we're gonna rig something up here and put an object just to the right of his head. 
You can put a stick through your bag, stick into the ground. But I want to have something here that's just about an inch away from my ear, kind of over my shoulder, so that if I sway, I would run into the noodle with my head. And for him to keep his um, head on the line, or his uh, left ear on the line, I want him to be able to make a backswing and not hit the noodle. Now I expressed to Jim, hey, when you do this, dude, and you normally go too far to the right, you're gonna feel probably like you're leaning towards the target compared to normal. You're gonna feel like your chest is much more up towards the target. You're gonna feel like your hips haven't moved to the right. It'll probably feel like you're a little bit left. Now you guys know, because you watch the videos, that you need to record yourself so you can see from face on, hey, I'm actually not doing what I feel. I'm actually centered there. So part one for Jim is gonna be noodle here. I'm gonna do my normal takeaway, but from the takeaway to the top, I'm folding my right arm like a bicep curl, and I'm adding a little bit of hinge. So I'm here, fold the arm, add hinge, don't hit the noodle. Fold the arm, add hinge, don't hit the noodle. And what we should start to see for Jim as he starts is the contact getting much crisper. And if you struggle with moving off the ball, this would be the place where I would start. You can put a noodle to the right or to the left. I like to the right so that it's not on the way on the way through, and simply don't hit it. Get used to having your head here, Keep your head to the left, but again, it's gonna feel like you're much more centered, maybe even a little bit left compared to normal. And the contact should start to get much crisper. Now for Jim in particular, when he's doing the backswing part, what we're gonna look for is the right arm getting closer to 90 and the club being from this angle, parallel to the ground with the hinge. Again, as he's doing that in transition, that's gonna get us into that much more powerful downswing spot that I wanted. But this is the piece for staying centered, the main drill we're gonna to use to start. Now the last piece that I gave to Jim, which is really a micro part, but I wanna get in there, is the setup pieces. We can see with Jim, I gave him two pieces of feedback. Number one, from face on, his sternum was too far forward relative to where his hips are which presets some of the backswing. So I just want his hips to be a little bit more forward. So his belt buckles in the middle of his feet or just forward. So like just a slight little bump to the left and get about 60% of the weight with the irons on the left leg. That's gonna help with the contact piece. Just hips a smidge more forward. And then from the down the line, I want the hips more forward this way towards the ball. See Jim's a little bit too far back, but too far behind his heels and a little bit more knee bend. So I told Jim, hey, Get the middle part of your hip over your ankle and get your kneecaps over the balls of the feet. And I showed a little picture of Hideki on there. So hips more forward and a little more forward towards the target. So when he takes his setup position, and this is just to build a foundation so we have no issues later on in the swing, hips more forward toward the ball, hips over ankles, little knee bend, hips forward this way, that's the setup. Now I'm staying centered, fold my right arm and hinge. Stay centered fold my right arm and hinge. I'm using the noodle for feedback. Hips forward and forward. Stay centered, right arm fold and hinge. And we should start to see that that contact and the crisp contact with the irons increase. Let's do that one more time. So I take our setup position. Hips forward and forward. Knees a little bent, good. Now I'm staying centered, folding my right arm and adding hinge. Stay centered, fold my right arm and add hinge. And we're gonna monitor with Jim, A, the movement pieces, but ultimately the solid contact. What we're looking for is X out of 10 to increase. So if he normally hits four out of 10 solid, I want that to go to six, seven, eight here in the first four weeks. And I also want to lessen the gap between his good and bad. So if no, not only do I want more frequency of the good shots, but if we take a bad shot and a good shot, I want them to look closer or make his bad shots better. So those are gonna be our goals. When I watch uh, Jim swing next time, I'm looking for differences within those. You guys hopefully got a good feel here of the feedback, what we do on CavornoGolf.com. I hope this style of video that's more direct, you can see how that works, helps you guys. If you do want your swing to be analyzed, if you wanna work with myself and our coaches, I would love to do something like this for you as well. We'll put a link down below for CavornoGolf.com. Thank you guys for watching.